This is a big old sack of stuff right here, and I'm going to be doing an unbagging, unboxing, what have you, of my entire gear that is inside of this bag heading to New Zealand. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Welcome back to Outdoor Greatness. This is going to be somewhat of a different video. I've never done something like this where I literally unpack an entire bag that I'm taking on a trip. The preparation uh, that I've put in being a first time hunter, I've probably overpacked being a first time over, uh, a first time mountain hunter, uh, specifically goats uh, going way up and for a significant number of days looking at hunting six to seven uh, days. So it's, a, it's basically a whole week carrying all the supplies that I need, uh, not only to hunt, uh, taking all of my camera type stuff, that has been a real challenge. So let's start unzipping, unbuckling, doing all those things to get in to what is going on inside of this big old sack. Let's just start with the bag itself, y'all, and actually a lot of the contents in here made by a company called QU. They specialize in make, making uh, lightweight mounting mountain hunting gear. This company was personally recommended by some of my best friends. So this is the biggest one they make. This is the uh, 7200, I don't even know what the name of this thing is, Icon Pro 7200. I can't tell you how many liters it fits. Don't know the technicals on that. I just know it is a whammer jammer holding 54 pounds currently. Open up the top lid right here. Uh, one of the first things, the most important things, and I've Debated not even carrying this thing because it weighs so much, but I have to get the crispiness. It is my favorite lens that I own uh, for my outdoor content. That is my uh, my Canon 70 to 200 millimeter, uh, 2.8. So that just means it gets the crispiness, that 2.8. The stuff gets the goods. And I'm going to be filming my buddy a lot. He's going to be bow hunting for mountain goats. Uh, it's one of the hardest things you can do in hunting, and I really want to try to capture a lot of that. In order to do that, need a little bit longer lens, uh, and in the top of my shell here, I have an accessory for that, which is a, a two times piece of glass. So it basically takes that 200, makes it a 400, film it in 4K and all that good stuff, you can really punch out there. So those are two key pieces of equipment just for filming the hunt, and they weigh a lot, so that's not Normally something you'd have to carry on a hunt like this, but for me, filming this outdoor stuff, you go, I gotta do it. So in the very top of the bag itself too, there's actually a lot, a lot of storage. And I've got my puffies. That's actually not called a puffy. That's a pretty unprofessional name. Uh, I don't know the actual name. This is the Super Down Pro. So I believe it's the warmest thing they make. And I went with that. This is their verde green color too. The nice thing about them is now they're down material, so very well insulated, but they're not very heavy. I think this is one of the heaviest things they make, but still not very heavy. So I've got tops and bottoms there, leaving them in an accessible place so that they can be accessed if I'm you know, down on the ground filming, if it's cold, if we're just stationary. Uh, or if it's just extremely cold and we're hiking. For those who are curious, uh, New Zealand right now, from my understanding, it's kind of going into a winter time and it's uh, starting to get some snow and it's getting a little slushy, nasty out there uh, around the freezing temps at night. So want to make sure you got some good warm clothing. That's what I've got on top. I really don't want to put this on top. I might change that up, but just to be accessible, like really quick, I can grab that out, switch out lenses, and go. Um, now this is I'm probably going to be wearing on the outside of my body and this is my my camera body. Um, I'm actually taking the one that I broke when I flipped in uh, one of those ATV vehicles when I was uh, filming that music video with Granger Smith. It's still broken, haven't fixed it, but I filmed so many videos on this. This is the best camera I've ever owned. Uh, the other one that I'm filming on right now is a newer version of of this camera and I like this one even more. I mean, this thing has just been through the trenches and I've got a 12 to 35 millimeter uh, Lumix lens for that. I got this lens because it's really light, it's easy. Um, it has autofocus, I can hand it to my buddy uh, when I'm hunting and uh, it just makes it a little easier. And I have a strap 
or a uh, connection on the outside of the pack right here. This is a, a clip. So uh, there's a, a uh, clip that attaches to this and I'll be able to click that right in on my shoulder strap while we're hiking and I'll be able to access my camera quickly if I need to. Just in case I feel like vlogging the situation, maybe my fingers are freezing off or maybe uh, somebody just threw up from altitude sickness. No, I'm just kidding. What is going to happen is we're going to be seeing some of the most beautiful scenery on planet Earth. A lot of the things, movies you see, I mean, Game of Thrones, it's hot right now. New Zealand, uh, Lord of the Rings, New Zealand. They're hitting up that New Zealand. I'll go through the rest of the extremities of the pack. Uh, easily accessible stuff here. I'm gonna have my, this is a Garmin thing. I've taken this on crazy trips, take it to Mexico, Canada, um, Brazil, like anywhere that I don't have cell service. This is easy to keep in touch with the wife so you don't get in trouble when you're gone. You can keep things copacetic at home. Uh, basically allows me to text anywhere in the world. And then uh, I have some headpieces. I have uh, you know your classic Walmart uh, headpiece camo situation. Then I've got a nice Kuyu beanie. I have some merino wool gloves, just uh, a thin layer, just to kind of keep the keep the frostbite away. I have a headlamp. Sucker is bright, doing it, ready for action. And I'm pretty sure that's the button's gonna be pressed on that at some point and probably the battery's gonna die. So I also have one of my favorite little lights. This is a, uh, an O-Light that takes one AAA battery and that lasts a good while, has a low and it has a high. And you can clip this right on your hat and that's why I really like it. So you can use it for two different purposes. The straps on this thing are crazy. It's got enough straps to strap down an elephant on, on your back. This is going to be my, um, my canister to hold my coffee, my free range coffee, because that's going to be important to keep me going in the morning. And then uh, also just hold my water. Uh, we're going to be using uh, water to boil our food and obviously to drink. We're going to be working on thirst out there, hiking. I kind of wanted to go with just a regular plastic, but I figured my water wouldn't freeze in here and I can keep my coffee hot. Hot coffee is important to keep the spirits high. Uh, inside of here as well, I've also got a rain pant and a rain jacket. This is gonna be ultra important right here. Uh, it's gonna be kind of a mix between rainy and snowy. Uh, you can't be wet and cold. You could be one or the other. You could be wet and warm, and you could be cold and dry, but you can't be those two, because then you're just, you're not gonna live very long. You can throw those over uh, all the layers. So you can th throw that over the puffy and the other layers that I'm about to show you. Uh, also, I may chunk this, but I have a camo cover, this whole entire cover to go over the, uh, the lens and the body. I've actually had this for a while and I've never used it. Uh, but essentially you tuck, your, you tuck your lens inside of here and you put your body of your camera inside of there. So if we were sitting there glassing during, you know, it's drizzling or something like that, I could get some sick footage of uh, some animals, even in the rain. Some of these little things I may just toss out during this unpacking, unboxing, because uh, this pack weighs so much as it is. Trekking poles. I never imagined myself using trekking poles. But I got myself a uh, cheap pair off Amazon. This is just one of the highly rated ones. I think they were like 40 bucks or something like that, but they're telescoping. Uh, I'm actually not carrying a tripod on this trip. This camera right here, one of the reasons I love it so much is it has image stabilization built in. So it literally stabilizes uh, your footage. Anyone that's ever filmed with a long lens like this knows how important that is. Because if not, it just looks like this and it's it's terrible. And then I'm going to shoot using these as well with the camera because it's just, it's a good stable platform. You can use these for a lot of things in camping. Like during my researching on everything I need to do, I mean, you could set up tents with this, uh, tarps, you can, you know, bat away a bear or something. I don't know. Trekking poles, pretty useful tool uh, in hiking. Plus, 
if you guys, well, you're gonna see where we're going. Uh, those are needed. Again, easily accessible on the outside. Got a rain cover. This little deal right here covers the entire bag just in case it gets super nasty. So we have that, and then I have some serious gloves. These are like oven mitts with flexibility that you just feel like Iron Man with these things on. It's incredible. So anyways, I can't wait. This gear should have me set literally for like a decade. Like I really don't need to buy any more camo or uh, hunting clothing after after this. I'll be set for elk hunting, doing any, any tack, tackle anything, any kind of hunting I want to do with the purchase of this. These things right here that have been standing out in the video this whole time that probably wondering like, why is he carrying some daggum Aluakai water shoes? The reason is we're probably gonna have to cross quite a few uh, streams, little creeks, things like that. And I don't want to get my socks and boots wet. So um, in that case, just roll on up, roll on up the pants, stick these puppies on, walk through the creek. A lot of people carry Crocs, these are really light, but these are extremely light as well. And that's, that's just what I chose, because I already had them and I didn't want to spend any more money. Inside of this little red box is the key to life. It is the key to making the food. Uh, you guys have already seen this. I used it in a previous video when I was bass fishing and camping out. Uh, but this is a burner. It's a hiking travel burner that you can hook up to a small propane tank or a big propane tank and then cook your whatever. Cook your food, boil your water. Long spork so you can get up in there in them mountain houses and whatnot and not get your knuckles all spaghettified. This is a little heavy. I could probably chunk this. Uh, Phariseum rod, however you say that. And then I have some trekking pole accessories for snow. So if my starter goes out on my cook set deal, my burner, I can use this to light it up. And I've got a knife sharpener and I've got a knife in here somewhere. On the other big outside pocket, this is normally where you put like a spotting scope or something like that. I have a drone remote control. Probably the coolest place ever to fly a drone is New Zealand. This is normally what goes inside of my uh, film bag when I'm filming fishing videos and other content. And I just took this out. Small rectangle case goes nicely in that pocket. And this is where I will store my batteries, uh, my DSLR batteries. I'm, I'm keeping two in here that are quickly accessible. I've got about six or seven uh, GoPro batteries, uh, more batteries. This is for the microphone. So the microphone that you don't see here is a lo rather large microphone. It's the good audio. It's not really helping the echo that's in here right now. That's more of a carpeting issue, but that'll go on here. Another thing that I'm going to be wearing in uh, is this jacket. This is the Axis hybrid jacket. So this is actually water resistant quite a bit and it's kind of like a soft shell jacket. I'll probably be wearing this most of the time. So I'll have my layers on underneath this. Then I'll have the hybrid jacket on with a pant that I'm going to show you here in a minute. And then I'll move to the rain gear if it's like downpouring. But this will actually handle quite a bit of rain, quite a bit of drizzle and nastiness before I have to get into the rain gear. It just saves time. That is that. Now y'all. Now the cool thing about this bag is it has like a stuff sack in so that's all closed up right now but the thing I do really like about it besides getting into all these buckles and stuff makes it a pain but is it just has like this coffin style where you can get right into the goods if, if you need to. You don't have to like dig your hand in from this end and guess what's in there and pull it out. So in the uh, top of the bag right here, he's got these little uh, these little zipper pouches, these organizers. We got your TP now. We got your TP, and I've actually got what is called. Uh, excuse my language, but this, this this is the title. It is called an ass wipe, uh, and it has a picture of a donkey on there. Alcohol free with aloe, the perfect wipe for all occasions. So I can literally have a great wipe out in the wilderness with one of those uh, and I have standard toilet paper as well. 
I may decide on one or the other when I get over there, but for right now, I have both. I took a little Bass Mafia bag. These are cool. Uh, I love these bags. They actually, uh, the company owner told me they use these on, on a lot of hunts, and that's what gave me the idea to take it here, but it keeps your stuff watertight. The only thing is, these are a little heavy for a mountain hunt. I'm just using one of these small ones, but I'm keeping my pers my little personal care stuff in here. So I've got my mini toothbrush, toothpaste, little floss and deal, and there's some deodorant I'll eventually put in there. A uh, coffee drip system made by Sea to Summit. Uh, sea to Summit makes a lot of these things I have actually. The bag, the little uh, dry bags, this thing. I have to have that, it's not, not a question. So this device, a lot lighter than carrying a percolator around. Percolator is way too big. We're gonna get our coffee, we're gonna be okay. Everything else is gravy after that. Uh, I do have some first aid. I have a small little towel and I'm carrying emergency to keep the immune boosted. Well, I have some free range coffee in here. Now, I'm, uh, I'm gonna condense this bag, but that's what I got in there for now. This is a big deal right here. I need a good pillow. Gosh, it just feels good to have a big pillow. I'm a big pillow kind of dude. So, uh, also inside of here, randomly I have, I have the drum. I am carrying, which one is this? I think this is like the Spark or something. It's pretty daggum small, whichever one this is. Video quality, not the greatest, but size, definitely key here. In case you're wondering what that looks like there from a bird's eye view, that's what's going on. Um, I went ahead and I got some dry bags, some stuff sacks, things to make putting things in here easier and not having just like rando items uh, making a mess. Like the last thing I want to be doing is fiddling around with equipment um, up there and trying to organize it. So I've taken the time to organize it here and put it in these little sacks. Uh, the tent came like this. This is the Kuyu Mountain Star two person tent. So uh, it could sleep too, but because I have so much gear, this will be great uh, to be able to just set this up, have my gear inside of there um, and keep everything dry and organized. I have a little stuff sack here. This is electronic items. So this is going to be more batteries. It's going to be, uh, I'll just show you. I have a solar panel charging cell. So this unfolds, there's a solar panel here, actually four solar panels, and then it connects to uh, a big pad right here and it has a battery. Uh, the main thing is I wanna be able to recharge my DSLR batteries and I think I'll be able to recharge four or five of those. So extend my battery life a little bit more. It's gonna be crucial. I've never done anything like this, guys, so I don't know how much I'm gonna be needing. I've got two extra drone batteries, so limited fly time. That's basically like one flight for every battery, so I'll have three chances to fly the drone. Can't recharge the drone batteries. Voltage gets weird with the recharge on this. Now, these big white sacks. This one right here, muy importante. This is all my food necessary for uh, seven days on a mountain. This has the mountain house meals. They're all packed in here, nice and tight. So I've got 14 of these. I also have, uh, so I'm gonna have one of those in the morning, one of those in the evening, middle of the day. I've got uh, almond butter, because I can't have pita butter. I actually have one egg white, 18 almonds, half a date, no BS. That's what they say on there. I've also got uh, some stinger, waffle, honey waffle deals. I actually got a little bit in there. There you go. I've got 12 of those in there, and then I've also got some square organics. I've got about five of those protein bars. Uh, and then I've got some Cliff uh, Energy Shots, which is basically just electrolytes and caffeine. Drink those with some water. It's kind of like having a Gatorade out there. So that is my foods for the trip. I think we'll also pick up some some meats and cheeses, you know, some stuff while we're there. Carry up on the mountain, who knows. In this other sack right here, same thing. These, this is actually for carrying meat, by the way. These are the uh, the bone out thing. I still got the tag on that sucker. Yeah, you know. So you can put your meat right in here, and then uh, the pack will actually unfold in a section where you can stuff that in there and uh, pack out your meat and 
all that good stuff. Uh, and here I've got my clothing for the trip. These are important. These are uh, gaiters. These keep the snow and debris uh, away out of your uh, getting into your socks and your boots. So it keeps your, keeps your feet nice and dry. Uh, this has been one of my favorite garments. I've got one in another solid color, color around here somewhere. But this is a, uh, still got the tag on the sucker as well too. This is an insulated snap shirt by Kugu. And it's very light, but it gives you a nice good layer of warmth to go over your thermals. So I have, this is what I'm gonna be wearing every day. I've got thermal uh, pants, so thermal, thermal undies. I have the attack pant by Kugu, which I'll be wearing the whole time, the whole time. I'm wearing the attack pant, um, and that, that's probably the only pair of pants that I'm gonna carry. Three pairs of uh, Peloton uh, undies, uh, really, really good for getting the moisture away from your, your goods and keeping you nice and dry and comfortable there. And then I have two pairs of the Kugu uh, Merino wool socks and I'm probably going to go with one more pair. I, the pair I'm wearing right now I really like too. They're made by Fox River. Fox River, daggum. They're pretty good. At the very bottom of the bag, last but gosh dang important right here is my sleep system besides the pillow. I mean, look at that. That's how, that's how important the pillow is. I don't know. I've got one more smaller pillow I may take, but gosh, it is, I've literally laid in this system, thought about it, uh, and this feels really good. But I am taking, this is a, a friend of a friend's right here is letting me borrow it. But I think this is made by Sierra Designs. And this has no zippers on it. Yeah, it's made by Sierra Designs. And it's a 20 degree bag. Uh, it's designed so that you can slip your sleeping pad in this back slot right here and you won't roll off of it. Which I think is genius because this material is slick. You know, you start rolling that material around and you just slide right off. It's like a daggum slip and slide. And this, uh, the sleeping pad blows up and then you stick it on the, uh, on the inside of that, on the back, and then it, it doesn't move. I have a terrible back, so I'm not thrilled about the, the whole situation there, but this is gonna get me through just fine. That, my friends, is my entire contents of what is going in that bag. My boots as well, they're sitting on the, uh, the dryer right now. But uh, this, is, this is the boot I'm carrying. It's the Danner Powderhorn, uninsulated. Literally went through with a, uh, like a Bic pencil, mechanical pencil today, and was like scraping out all of the mud, the little mud, just the little sand pieces, because I've heard it is a nightmare scenario uh, in New Zealand for if you have mud or any kind of like small seed on your footwear or anywhere in your tent or anything like that, um, they won't let you take it in because they're they're scared of you know vines just taking off of, from your boots. I literally had to scrub my tent with Dawn soap. I soaked those in Dawn soap and and really washed them out. So also a belt. You can't go anywhere without a belt and the sunglasses. Those were sitting there the whole time as well. I've never done this type of hunting. Uh, it is going to be an absolute adventure. So that's what's coming next on the video series, y'all. And it will be a series. Uh, up until this point, it's just kind of been vlogs. Uh, and there will be a few vlogs like traveling there because I believe it's about three days of travel just to get to our first hunting spot. So that is going to be a whole uh, experience to film as well. And then we'll actually start the series itself, which is going to be amazing. Wish me luck, y'all. Let me know something good in the comments. Give me something tasty that, that I can read give, that'll give me inspiration while I'm up there on the mountain. Y'all, I love you. Thank you for tuning in. Next time I see you, we are going to be in a crazy awesome place. So stay tuned, and I'll see you then.